about what can viewers expect from App Dynamics and Titration? So the session on App Dynamics and Titration is basically going to go into how we can provide application performance, application availability and security with App Dynamics and Titration. And we'll really see this you know, integration of those solutions and how they can complement our customers' needs. Now, the thing is, we are known, right, as a network render, but we, we do so much more than that. And I think this application monitoring and performance monitoring of the applications is a really um, whole new area. It used to be a whole new area for us uh, back a couple years ago when we acquired Apple Dynamics, but we've gone so far in the innovation and the development there. Um, and, and we shouldn't forget security, right? So security is, you know, throughout the whole infrastructure and it's extremely important to make sure that your applications are secure as well, whether they are in the on-premise, on in your public cloud, private cloud, or anywhere they are. Um, and the, the next thing about app dynamics and titration that's interesting, um, I, th I think it's really understanding how network policies and infrastructure configurations are actually impacting their application performance. Right, so a lot of times we've got teams that are kind of fighting, like the application team would say, oh yeah, it's the infrastructure team, they have the problem, and the infrastructure team points you know, the fingers back at the application team, and then one can figure out you know, who's got the problem, and where the issues <laughs> are. So app dynamics and titration can really help our customer figure that out before the impact even um, is there, right? So before their customers are impacted. Um, so I think it's really, really breakthrough. And there is another massive value add um, of App Dynamics is, um, is, is really reducing this uh, time of services for our customers that are focused on their customers. So essentially we are thinking of the customers of our customers and saving their time and that, that's what our customers want to hear. Yeah, definitely. So we've, we're going to hear um, later on in a talk. I just want to get the names right here. So it's Yogesh from Cisco and Prathap um, from App Dynamics, which is obviously now part of Cisco since we acquired them in 2017. Um, so App Dynamics, age of the transformation really is what it sounds like you're describing there. Let's take a look um, at the video. At Cisco, We've been the network company, the data center company. We come at things from the infrastructure up. We needed to be more proactive than we've ever been before. We see the industry is changing so fast. The speed at which things operate are not like they were even just five years ago. If you were to look at the market, the way the technologies are evolving and advancing with the likes of AI and IoT, the demand for performance is more important than it's ever been. We need to be leading edge. The customers expect everything to be available 100% of the time, and they expect everything to happen as soon as they click the button. Customer experience is your business experience now. You know, that, that's how they gauge us as an organization. Within seconds, you, you know, you've gone from having a little problem by one customer, and it's escalated halfway around the world. For Carhartt, relationships are a big driver in how we do business. And it became really clear that App Dynamics had that right culture to work with Carhartt, that sense of urgency and you know what was the art of the possible, so to speak. Since we've had App Dynamics in place, it's created a one pane of glass experience across development and operations to truly understand what customers are experiencing and how the system is performing. We're maniacal about solving issues even before customers notice. With App Dynamics, we could actually find these things faster. Our use cases for AppDynamics are not just in IT. We're also using it to create business dashboards and give business business insight. With Business IQ, we were really able to put our data into one platform and one dashboard and unify how we were able to access all of it. Cyber Monday, we were sitting in a conference room with our AppD business dashboard, real time seeing how we were tracking for the day. We had an issue with orders dropping to our backend system and we were able to see it as it was happening and react to it before it ever impacted user experience. And that was a first for us. The insights that we can get from App Dynamics is really key to us becoming a world-class product. If we don't have App Dynamics, it would be really like driving a car at 100 miles per hour with your eyes closed. You can't afford not having the visibility that App Dynamics provides to our infrastructure. We understood the value and the benefits that it could bring not only to our customers, 
but to Cisco's overall portfolio. Wow, I think that was very informative. Now Steve Motler actually had a chance to speak with AppDynamic COO Dan Wright earlier this week. And we really can't wait to actually hear on what the conversation was because I think Dan Wright is um, you know, really that right person to speak to at AppDynamic. So let's have a look at the video. Hi everyone, thank you so much for joining us. I've got Dan Wright here in the studio with me. Dan is COO of the fabulous AppDynamics. I'm so glad to have you here, man. Great to be here. <laughs> All right, so the combined power of AppDynamics with Cisco, we're providing this, this great end-to-end -end visibility, this insight and action, and we're enabling IT teams to really drive critical business results every day out there. What I want you to do first is encapsulate for us, what does AppD bring to us here at Cisco? Yeah, it's a, it's a great question, and to kind of put it in context, if you think about what's going on at a macro level right now, we've got change happening faster than at any point in history. We have technology impacting every part of our lives, from the way that we live, to the way that we learn, to the way that we buy, right? And at the same time, that has resulted in businesses doubling down on their customer's experience. Mm -hmm. That ultimately is what it comes down to, and the bar is heavier, higher than it's ever been before. Sure. You think about a Google search, that's what your customers expect, and if you can't keep up, you get left behind. Right. At the same time, because uh, businesses are trying to use agile models to keep up with that and, and to speed up their innovation, they're losing visibility and they are increasing the complexity of, complexity of their IT environments from the network through the infrastructure into the application layer. And so, what we announced last week uh, with uh, an event that was co-hosted by Chuck Robbins and our CEO David Wadwani at AppDynamics was called the Central Nervous System for IT. The idea being that we can optimize your business results regardless of whether a performance issue is happening in the network, in the infrastructure, or in the application. We're bringing it all together and then much the same way that a human central nervous system um, you know, is able to react automatically, we're using AI and machine learning to do the exact same thing. Exactly, and we're going to talk, I want to get to AI, I want to get to ML. Let's talk about the security element of that conversation because as all these applications onboard faster and faster, the agility that you were talking about a moment ago, what does that do not just to the threat surface but to our reaction time? Yeah. I mean, I, I think security is paramount to what, everything that we do, right? You think about the massive amounts of data that exist today, you think about everywhere that th you know, threats exist, especially with complex you know, multi-cloud environments, public cloud, private cloud, uh, you really need to be able to cover the entire IT stack in like a blanket of security. And so that's where we think we have a competitive advantage there with being Cisco, that we now cover you know, the network, infrastructure, and application, and security is paramount in everything we do. And you actually just brought up something that's so important. One of the things I'm fascinated with with AppDynamics is that our own people, our own Cisco people, are so excited about what AppDynamics brought to Cisco when you guys came on board with us. Why do you think even our own people are so hyped up about this, let alone the entire industry around us? Because what we're doing is we're changing the way our customers think about their business and what's possible for their careers. We're having a different conversation than we've ever been able to have in the past. And I love the human element of it. We have yeah. this uh, campaign that's going on now called Agents of Transformation. And what it talks about is the, the conversation that we're able to have with our customers around from you know, previously in the past having to do reactive troubleshooting now we're actually being proactive, helping them optimize business results and impact the top and bottom line. And ultimately that can change their career. We have lots of great stories of CIOs that we work with being uh, you know, promoted or winning you know, CIO of the year. The, the CIO at Carhartt is one example of that. Sure. Um, those are, I think, conversations that we're really excited to have with our customers and they're excited to have with us, so it's a great thing. It's really, it's just fun to hear about, even from an interior perspective. What does it really mean for AppDynamics to be a part of the Cisco family? How did it change your focus and perspective from the COO arena? Yeah. Well, I mean, what we look at it is a opportunity to connect the application you know, to the infrastructure and the network where Cisco has you know, a dominant position mm -hmm. has, and has for many years and is really on the cutting edge. So one thing that we've looked at is how do we connect all of that? We recently launched a integration with ACI, trying to connect, again, the application to the network. Uh, but then the other thing is just the reach that Cisco has and the brand power. 
So one thing that I've been doing in my role is traveling around to geos throughout the world, helping them learn more about the power of app dynamics in the context of Cisco and the value it can bring for their business. And I will tell you, it's accelerating uh, you know, app dynamics growth, but more importantly, we're able to help more customers than we ever could before. I just feel like the conversation changed so much when you officially became, we're still telling the story, but the story is so exciting that I feel like you guys are really still doing your own thing even beyond what we're doing uh, within the holistic family of what Cisco is up to. Well, what we're trying to do is continue to add to the Cisco story, and I think in order to do that, velocity is really critical. I think that in the acquisition, we've tried to strike the right balance, and we've done a pretty good job of this in making sure that from an R&D perspective, we are just pedal down, trying to push the boundaries of what's possible when it comes to uh, not only you know, application performance monitoring, which is kind of how we got started, mm -hmm. but actually tying it back to business outcomes and then bringing in AI and ML. Cisco, though, is providing all of the support, whether it is uh, you know, from an R&D standpoint or you know, we acquired a company last year, this was announced, uh, called Perspica, or sorry, the, the year before last, that was a lot of the AI and the machine learning that we've been able to build into the platform. And what do you think is next for AI and ML? We'll go ahead and we'll wrap it up with that. What do you think are the next big steps? I think the next big step is when you think about what our customers are saying to, to us, they do not want to be reactive. They don't want to be yeah. doing you know, troubleshooting manually. That just doesn't cut it anymore. And so where they want to go is predictive and they want it throughout every uh, aspect of their IT ops. Um, and so it's this concept of, of what we call AI ops is whether you're talking about vince, visibility, insights, or actioning, being able to predict using AI and machine learning uh, you know, what could impact business performance and then optimize that uh, sort of before it happens. That's the future. That's a lot of what we're doing now. We, we uh, announced last week a cognition engine and one of the ideas there is going to a automa automated root cause analysis where before customers had to dig down to the individual line of code to figure out a performance issue, now it's being automatically surfaced to them. So it's just one example of us doing the work for our customers and making their lives easier. Fantastic, all right, quick hit, five seconds. People want to learn more about App Dynamics. you're going to send them to? Come to our events, we'll be here all week. Uh, come to a, uh, the Cisco World of Solutions, we're going to be there, we have a booth and uh, come talk to us. We're around all weekend, we'd love to talk. Beautiful, Dan Wright, thank you. It's thank been a pleasure you so to talk to you. Thanks to all of you for tuning in. Wasn't that amazing? I really found Dan Wright so spot on when he talks about predictive analytics, right? We want to predict where the problems might happen and prevent them. So now we're going to do exactly what Dan said, go to World of Solutions and check out the App Dynamics book there. Rob, over to you. Thank you so much, Igram. Guys, I'm so excited to be here because I had a great chat with this gentleman last year, John Rakowski with App Dynamics. He explained things to me, and of course, because of the fact I cannot keep up with how fast things are changing, he has agreed to walk us through some of the uh, top new things that AppD is doing for all of us. So thank you, John, appreciate yeah, your time. Well, thank you, Rob, and it's great to be back at Cisco Live. Um, so App Dynamics, we provide an application intelligence solution and essentially that provides real-time application and business performance monitoring. And let's have a look what we can see on the screen here. So effectively on the screen, what we can see is one of the unique abilities of AppDynamics when it comes to application performance monitoring. Uh, we identify all those interactions which are key to user experience and also to business, uh, to business outcomes. And we bring this together into our consistent unit of measurement called a business transaction. And that means that you're not just monitoring an application holistically, but you're monitoring every individual step in that application, every kind of user step. So what we've done here on this dashboard, and these dashboards are really simple to create in App Dynamics, yeah, I like that. is we've laid out all of these business transactions in a logical user journey. Now, one of these user transactions, as we can see, has got a major problem with it. It's in the red, so let's kind of troubleshoot and have a look what's going on. Now we see the next unique thing about App Dynamics. You see, when you deploy our agents, we identify all of your uh, application's architectures, all the nodes, all the message queues, all the back-end databases. And what we see on the screen here is that we've got two nodes talking to three back-end databases. We've also got a number of KPIs at the bottom. Now, the next unique thing about App Dynamics is that we dynamically baseline every single metric, whether that's a technical metric or a business metric. Yeah. I'm going to come on to the business metrics later on. But 
Um, we also score every one of those business transactions, giving them a, uh, a, a kind of tiering of normal, slow, very slow, stall or error conditions. Now, as you can see on the screen, we've got 39 errors. Let's go and investigate what's going on. And what we're going to do here is try and get to the root cause very, very quickly of kind of what's going on. So App Dynamics was built for uh, production monitoring. It allows us to kind of find out what's going on in regards to the application very, very quickly. So we can see here we've got a number of very slow uh, business transactions for Fetch Catalog. And if I drill into one of these, this then takes us to our tra transaction snapshot viewer. But in one more click, we're going to get down to the root cause of this issue. So if I click on this, this take now takes us to our call graph. The call graph then gives timings for every procedure and function in the application itself. We can see at the bottom all the time is being spent with a JDBC connection, which is an Oracle query. So if I uh, click on this, I can then find out the exact SQL query, which is causing the issue. I can then send that to the database team, solve the problem very, very quickly. Now, traditionally, within many enterprises, they use multiple monitoring tools, which means you've got to go through different consoles, you've got to kind of uh, get people in a room to kind of find out the issue. But we've done that very, very quickly. Now, I want to show you another thing as well. You see, recently at App Dynamics, only uh, last week, we announced Cognition Engine. So this was based on an acquisition which Cisco did uh, of Perspeaker a couple of years ago. So Cognition allows us to use machine learning and artificial intelligence, and those are great buzzwords I know in the industry great. today. Um, and they let us get to the root cause of a problem in very complex environments. So you imagine like today's application and infrastructure environments consist of microservices, they've got containers, Docker containers, they've got multiple cloud environments, this whole notion of multi-cloud. So effectively it can become very hard to troubleshoot and understand the root cause. But what AppDynamics does with Cognition Engine is it lets us get and find the root cause of an issue very, very quickly. We can step through this timeline, understand what the top suspected root causes are here in plain, simple English, and we can also execute actions. Many of our customers today are executing millions of actions to solve problems automatically. This notion of AI ops, which is the next big thing when it comes to AppDynamics. Yeah. You're so amazing. I, your energy is infectious, and you warned me, and I remember that from last yeah. year. Now that we we reconnected like that, but this is exciting stuff. You guys are changing fast, and what's interesting is a lot of people don't realize how we have the integrations on top of integrations Definitely. that we've had before. So everything keeps getting better and better. Thank you so much, no John. I appreciate Thank your you time. Much. And with that, we'll go back over to Nish, I believe. Thanks, Rob. I have to say, App Dynamics is one of my favorite um, solutions that Cisco sells. And the reason for that is because I think that we live in such a world where everything is so fast moving and we have really high expectations as customers. So if I walk into a bank, I'm not going to accept that it's down or, for example, I expect the best experience everywhere that I go. Um, so yeah, App Dynamics, um, thank you so much for that, Rob. So what we are going to do next is we're going to go to the Innovation Showcase, um, and that's going to be more around App Dynamics. So we'll be learning a little bit more around some of the applications um, of App Dynamics as well. So yeah, make sure that you stay tuned. Um, and yeah, we really hope to see you there. Um, so yeah, just remember, use the hashtag CLEUR um, and stay tuned. Let us know what you think and enjoy. Thanks, bye. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Innovation Showcase Theater. My name's Toby, and I have the pleasure of being your host today. Now, we all know that to thrive in the new world of digital business, companies have to stay on top of innovation like never before. And that's why we're bringing you 11 sessions here at Innovation Showcase, where we're going to share with you the latest solutions, service innovations, and best practices, which we know will engage and inspire you here at Cisco Live 2019. Now today we'll be looking at the topic of ensuring application availability, performance, and security with App Dynamics and Tetration. And to tell us about it, we have two great speakers with us from Cisco, Prathap Dendi and Yogesh Kaushik. First up to stage, please give a warm welcome to Prathap Dendi. Thank you, Toby. Good morning, everyone. Let me get my clicker. First of all, I want to thank all of you for this opportunity. This has been uh, the second year since uh, App Dynamics has been acquired by Cisco, and it has been a terrific ride for us. Uh, it's almost as exciting as uh, last night's game. Has anyone been to the Barcelona game last night? Quite a few of you. Uh, what a team. Uh, what a team, and, and if you think about their performance, that performance brings to our topic here. It has been really important in the last 10 years or so uh, since App Dynamics has been founded 
what we've seen is the rate at which applications are, are innovated, the rate at which the customer experience is changing, and it's all been around performance. Can we deliver business performance at that pace of innovation that customers want to see? So we have some exciting content. Me and my colleague Yogesh will walk you through. But roughly, here's what we will cover. First off, what is infrastructure that is really aware of applications? All the things that are going on around our applications, whether it's IoT or mobile or voice interaction, how do we tame all of that complexity into a very application-aware infrastructure? So we're going to spend some time on that. Then, I'm really excited to have a few customers talk to us about what they're doing. These are some of the digital transformed customers, the winners in their digital experience. They're going to talk to us about what they've been doing about their applications and some best practices there. And then we're going to switch into how do we focus all of that goodness in application-aware infrastructure towards business outcomes? Because at the end of the day, that's really what matters. Our line of business, our business models invest into applications and infrastructure because they want to have a better outcome and a better experience for our customers. So we're going to focus on that. And then we're going to look at some of the trends. You heard a lot in this event about the multi-cloud innovation. We'll talk about what multi-cloud is doing for applications and how is it driving the journey so for end users even better. And then we'll close out with, with all of this, how do we make sure the applications are secure? How do we be proactively go about the services all across the infrastructure? Yogesh will cover that. And then we'll sh share a little bit of best practices as we close out. So with that said, you guys know this, you know, whether you've taken a taxi to this event or, or, or an airplane ride or, or maybe got some cash on the way or you went to the Barcelona game last night, the simplicity and the sophistication of applications is out there. You've seen whether it is a mobile or a voice interaction, it, it is seemingly very simple. But what it hides, what it really hides, and we know this in our daily jobs, is an immense scale and complexity behind the application. And that complexity permeates through every facet of our infrastructure, whether it is simply clicking a, a line of code with a, with a small interaction that's sending a lot of requests back into the database from browser to the mobile to the back-end data centers, whether it's on-premise or public cloud, there's a ton of compl complications that we hide from the customers. And what that does is if you are truly a company that wants to be leading the digital experience, you have transformed your applications. We've seen a lot of fracture and refracturing of applications that make it very simple. And the, the opportunity that's between a digital laggard and, and a truly transformed digital leader, the research indicates that it's about six trillion dollars. And that, that's really the, the models, the business models we're seeing, whether it's the hoteling industry that's getting fractured or the airline industry that's around simplicity, that's the difference we see from laggards to leaders. And we'll hear from some of the best customers that have actually taken a proactive lead to transform their applications and their infrastructure to get there. And last but not the least, when you, do, when you go through that transformation, one thing that you have to be very aware of is now there are no physical boundaries around an infrastructure. The application permeates from your edge, and you've seen some uh, demos here around the IoT and edge case use cases. Liz was talking about it on Tuesday. There are no more boundaries for an application. The application experience comes from not only your core applications, but also your customer applications. There are thousands of API calls that go from any click that you have or any call you make all the way to the back end. And how do you go about securing them? It, it takes too long today. The cost of a breach ranges anywhere from $5 million to $350 million. The time it takes to catch a breach is just too large to accept. So what are we doing? What are the best practices in terms of making it much faster and, and, and the war rooms that we all get invited to, whether you're a, networks, a network operator or a DevOps person or an engineer, how do we make that experience much faster? How do we go from one to two to three clicks at most to make sure we quickly find where the breach has been, whether it's a performance breach or a security breach, how do we do that very quickly? And you know this construct. You know, we've always had it. In the war room, when there is a 
when there is a, you know, business inconvenience, when, the, when a customer is not very happy with the performance, whether it's a mobile app or a device or a kiosk, you know, the first thing we see now, because now the applications equal business models, we see a customer who's not very happy with us. And there we get the call, and everybody sits together and take a long time to kind of look at, you know, where is the problem? Is it database? Never the problem. Is it network? And, and we know network is never the problem. And it takes hours sometimes, and it's just unacceptable. In, in a world where applications are released every day, where the apps are updated you know, every day, this is unacceptable where we have a long time to take before we actually come to the root cause of the problem. Now, what happens often is, if, the, if these teams are taking a long time, any inconvenience to the customer goes directly to the line of business. There's a ton of direct visibility where the line of business looks at it and goes, why is this happening? Why is my conversion rate plummeting? How do we quickly send a patch? All of that is very relevant to our conversation today. Now, instead of me talking to you about how we go about it and what are some of the best practices, I thought we'll bring in some customers and see how they're doing it. How are they delivering some flawless experiences to the customers, no matter what is the medium of application, no matter whether the application is coming from their you know, deep-rooted uh, mainframe in the back or, or, or a new serverless uh, AWS Lambda function or a mobile app they just launched. Let's, let's take a listen to some of the best brands in the world about how they're approaching and how the role of IT has changed in, in serving the business. So join me in welcoming some of the best brands in the world and, and can take a careful listen what they're doing. We see the industry is changing so fast. The speed at which things operate are not like they were even just five years ago. If you were to look at the market, the way the technologies are evolving and advancing with the likes of AI and IoT, the demand for performance is more important than it's ever been. We need to be leading edge. The customers expect everything to be available 100% of the time, and they expect everything to happen as soon as they click the button. Customer experience is your business experience now. You know, that, that's how they gauge us as an organization. Within seconds, you know, you've gone from having a little problem by one customer and it's escalated halfway around the world. For Carhartt, relationships are a big driver in how we do business. And it became really clear that App Dynamics had that right culture to work with Carhartt, that sense of urgency and you know what was the art of the possible, so to speak. Since we've had App Dynamics in place, it's created a one pane of glass experience across development and operations to truly understand what customers are experiencing and how the system is performing. We're maniacal about solving issues even before customers notice. With App Dynamics, we could actually find these things faster. At the technical level, it gives you an MRI of your enterprise where you can see all those corresponding layers. We can see the cloud, we can see these services. I can orchestrate that and roll that into the enterprise so quickly. Our use cases for App Dynamics are not just in IT. We're also using it to create business dashboards and give business business insight. With Business IQ, we were really able to put our data into one platform and one dashboard and unify how we were able to access all of it. When you're talking about AI ops, running a world-class infrastructure and having customers rely on you for everything that they do, you have to have insights. The insights that we can get from App Dynamics is really key to us becoming a world-class product. If we don't have App Dynamics, it would be really like driving a car at 100 miles per hour with your eyes closed. You can't afford not having the visibility that App Dynamics provides to our infrastructure. It's great. So, before we go into the next session, really, let me summarize a few things. We heard from brands like BMW. We, we heard from uh, digital first customers like Okta. It's really around equating your business model to applications. You know, today, business is the application. Then, how do we go about it? How do we get that visibility into the application? That's the first one. Uh, the second one is, once we tame that, how do we make sure the business outcomes that the business cares for are actually in that infrastructure and, and we're protecting them both from a security perspective as well as a performance perspective. And the last one is the big migration, the cloud migration, not just an IT investment, it really is an impactful event for the business. How are we helping IT through the migration of the cloud? So those are the three pieces that we'll cover today. Number one, 
how do we make sure the infrastructure is completely in line with the application changes? One of the things that we must have, and you've heard some of the customers talk about, is just gaining that visibility into the customer experience. Not the way you see your applications, not the way you've purchased a particular application, not the way you've supported the application, but really the end journeys. You know, if it's an insurance claim or, or a, a bank uh, purchase withdrawal, how do we go through that particular uh, live customer journey? A and whether the customer goes through uh, a particular mobile app or, or stopped at your bank uh, branch office or has gone through online completely, it doesn't matter. They're all functionally the same synonymous function. So how do, we, how do we keep an eye on it? How do we measure it closely as the same transaction then gets into the cross stack, right? You know, in the world of multi-cloud, it's vitally important for us, whether we use uh, on-prem infrastructure or a public cloud or, or a hybrid infrastructure, as the customer goes through these hops, how do we make sure the latencies don't creep in? How do we make sure the entire end-to-end -end journey is secure? It is possible today. You know, since we last talked at the last uh, innovation showcase, we have released, based on the customer demand, a, a widest range of uh, coverage, as we call it, right from mainframes in the back end, all the way to the front end with AWS Lambda. And, and that's where the customer journeys are. And, and we have to be there to instrument every one of those moves and provide uniform awareness for the, for the journey. The next one, and, and, and you saw David Geckler and, and Roland and everybody talk about this, You've asked us, when we, when we came to you last year and, and announced uh, some of the innovations, you said, look, I'm a network ops persona. I want to see the same application context that my application um, counterparts looks at before we even go to the troubleshooting and, and war room. Is it possible that we can share the same exact data model? The highly correlated data model that AppDynamics brings for application users, can that be shared with the network uh, uh, network ops people, and we delivered that. You know, the ACI integration and, and all the way to cloud center and titration integration, now you have available. We have demos in the, in the solution area which we should go and see. And what this allows is, whether it is a network policy change or it is an application release, very quickly, within seconds, you can see the same context build out. If the application performance has suffered because of a network policy, you can find that out with confidence right away with a single click of a button, and vice versa. If there is a new application release and network policy is still supporting it and there is some difference, you can spot it right away and alert your counterparts on the application development side. And doing that in the realm of multi-cloud is really, really important because to the application user, all of that infrastructure, whether it is local, on-premise, or, or, or somewhere else, it's all the same, right? So doing that in a single control panel where the data exchange happens in all the layers is, is vital for all of us. Now, all of this, once we've gotten an application and an infrastructure together, how do we then serve the line of business? And that's the next big topic that we want to cover. And, and quite simply, because application because of App Dynamics agents are in the stream of your code, we have the business semantics right in front of us. It's not just about number of calls and latency and the time taken for page loads, but we can also take a look at the business semantics. We can actually understand that a particular customer that starts the journey in, in booking a ticket goes all the way through the conversion of the ticket. What if we supply that information and say, because of this, a particular problem for a platinum customer is happening over here. So that type of visibility is available to you today. And code level diagnostics. If you're a network user or an application user, your ability to identify that problem all the way down to the single line of code that's offending the performance within seconds after it happens is, is, is today possible through the integrations. Now once you have it, and really, this is what matters. You know, there's one key takeaway from this session that's really this, which is, can you tie any changes that happen, any investments that you make in your application layer, in your infrastructure layer, back to where it really matters in real time? Can we get you fully correlated information so that you can go back to a product line manager, you can go back to a line of business and say, this is the real time insight into what we pushed. This is how the business is actually behaving. And, and that's possible today. And, and one of the use cases that we share here is, you know, if you're a customer and you've gone through uh, different cycles of releases, can you actually compare that the previous application release on the left side here and the, and the current application release on the right side here, is it actually getting better? And if yes, where is it getting better? Are the logins faster? 
is the shopping cart conversion any better? So you can actually compare that as you go through your DevOps life cycle. And, and that's you know, really, really impactful. And the last one uh, is around multi-cloud. The multi-cloud infrastructure, as we've seen, tremendous, tremendous innovation. And what we've seen is, you know, even though the user experience is very simple, the user experience actually goes through a lot of the stack, cross-functional stack. Can we then create a uniform single pane of glass working with Titration, working with other you know, cloud center, uh, CWAM, all of these products giving you the unified correlation to that business. So that's, that's possible today. And most of our businesses, and you've heard from some of the best brands, have invested heavily into this migration of the cloud. And within the cloud migration, can you actually tie it back to a business outcome that you invested in? So you can go back in six months and say, look, we did a network refresh. We did, we did a cloud migration to AWS, or, or we refreshed our hardware. How is that impacting our line of business? So that's possible today. Now, if you have the full stack done, and you've migrated all of it, and your new applications are performing really well, that's not enough. You also have to be proactive about setting the right security policy and, and gain that visibility before it's too late with a breach. And to cover that segment, I want to invite Yogesh, my uh, colleague, to come up to the stage. Thank you, Pratap. Good morning, folks. I still said still a morning. Uh, so what I'm going to talk about is how changing architecture of applications is driving a fundamental shift in how you secure the applications. Now, traditionally, you build applications three-tier. You put a boundary around it. That's your firewall. Bad things don't come in because your firewall will save you. That boundary is shifting more and more to the unit of compute, which is your workload. The reason it's shifting, because your applications are everywhere. So you've heard Roland talk about it. There's nothing centered about data center anymore. It's everywhere. It's in multi-cloud. Your application is going to be in the cloud. You, they're going to scale elastically. So you have to take that boundary of your trust and put it all the way on the workload, all the way on the application. And that's what iteration is. Now, protecting the workload requires multiple things. You have to understand what each of these workloads is, what it does, and how it behaves. So what iteration does is essentially looking at a posture of security for your workloads, understanding things like, where are my vulnerable machines? Last year was the year of mega breaches, right? Apache struts, Heartbleed, WannaCry. Which machines are vulnerable? Which workloads have not been patched correctly? What is happening on each of these workloads? Okay, they're vulnerable, but are they actually being attacked? Are, are they already exploited? What is happening in terms of compliance? The, the intent that I've defined, the policy that I've defined, is it actually working the way I expect it to work? So things like that are very, very critical. System integrity, is somebody compromised the process that's running? So what titration does is look, takes a look at everything, provides you holistic visibility on what the security posture looks like. And we use machine learning techniques to essentially cover all of that. Second aspect, it's not just that. You, when you talk about workload, as Pratap was talking before, you still have mainframes, and you're going all the way to containers, and there's a lot of things in between. You have to be able to have a model that goes and works across all types of infrastructure. It has to work for workloads that are on-premises, workload that are in cloud. It has to work at large scale, any workload, any infrastructure. That's the solution you need. So that's the idea of titration. Now let me walk you through a journey on how titration achieves the workload protection at the policy. So first thing, know where you are. If you don't know where you are, don't change your policy. That could get in trouble. So first thing titration does, we hear it from customers all the time. What are my applications? How are they behaving? I don't want to break them. Give me a baseline. So first thing we do is define that baseline. So we use machine learning to understand what the environment looks like. That baseline is constantly reevaluated. Every 60 seconds, Tetration will go and look at how that baseline is changing over time. Are there new things? New vulnerabilities are found every day. The baseline has to have an impact on that. So how do we do that? Software vulnerabilities, we look at every single piece of software package deployed across every single workload and we can detect in real time which of these workloads have anything that's vulnerable in real time. If you want to define a policy that says, quarantine everything that has WannaCry vulnerability from coming and accessing my database, you can actually do that with iteration in 60 seconds. So that's powerful. Number two, how are these applications behaving? It's not just about what they are, but what the interactions are, who the neighbors are, who the peers are. If you scale an application, 
how do you use the same workload that was running here that popped up elsewhere in the cloud? So Application Insights essentially gives a map of your application. It gives you a fingerprint of your application. It's a behavioral model, all machine learning. You don't have to feed it a model iteration. We'll discover it for you. Next thing, don't leave all your CMDB, all your system of records behind. You have a lot of rich information that's already there. You have your orchestration systems, vCenter, Kubernetes if you're going to containers. You might have Excel files that track, this is my red, this is my green, this is my blue server. All of that you should be able to take into titration and define what these attributes are, what these workloads are. So we allow that. We also look at who are the users that are coming in and accessing these applications. Where are they coming from? What devices are they using? Again, gives you an idea of what this application is and how it interacts with the rest of the world. And finally, what is running on the application? What is each process doing? Down to the level of a system call. We track all of that. Now, all of these things are not only tracked, but constantly computed so we can create a baseline. So titration will actually give you a policy recommendation based on exactly how things work today in your environment. So it's kind of like, you know, quacks like a duck and walks like a duck must be a duck. Guess what? It's not always a duck. Or maybe you saw the duck and you didn't want it. Most of the times, when you see the baseline, you will find things in your environment that you don't want happening. That's now you start tightening the policy or getting to the zero trust model. Intent-based policy is all about first creating the baseline and then capturing the intent from multiple users. We talk a lot about intent-based policy, intent-based networking, but fundamental difference here is that intent is distributed as well the app developers, the business units, the security operations center, the network operating centers, they all want different things to happen based on what they control. So the model integration is, well, let's capture everybody's intent and let the machine do the connecting the dots, the handshakes, the approval processes, the merging, the conflict resolution, all of that. So titration will constantly recompute. Think of this as a policy compiler. Capture everybody's intent on attributes, on behavior, recompute the policy in real time. Last thing, very important. We have a beautiful green click which says, go enforce this policy everywhere. Any guesses how many people want to do that? Zero. Things might still break. How do I know for sure? So we allow you to test policy. In real time, with back data, you can say, I was breached three months ago. I made some changes. I want to see if these changes would actually have an impact and that breach won't happen. So titration allows you to do that. You can run experiments when everybody gives a thumbs up. Time for next step. Enforcing policy, as I talked about before. Your applications are everywhere. Your policy needs to go where the applications are. Taking the policy and the perimeter boundary all the way to the workload is extremely critical. That's, how, that's the only way you can truly scale. So titration does the enforcement of policy right on the workload. We do it across all types of workload, all the way from mainframes to containers, virtualized, bare metal, in cloud, on premises, doesn't really matter. Number two, you may still want to take a version of that policy and create a defense in depth. You may want to say, actually, I do want to put something in the network. It's still relevant for me. I still want to have a firewall. So Tetration generates this policy in standard formats and also integrates with other solutions like our firewalls. In fact, there's a booth there in Secure Data Center where you'll see how we connect the dots with Cisco firewalls, with StealthWatch, which is a threat analytics solution, as well as with ACI. Now, the last thing is that policy also needs to go into cloud infrastructure. Well, guess what? Titration does that as well. The open model allows us to essentially integrate with anything that does an orchestration. Titration's goal is to find the policy, understand the policy, give you multiple ways to implement that policy across multiple layers. Now, you're never done. Once you define the intent and push the policy in, you still have a day job to make sure that intent is followed all day, every day. New things are happening every single time. New vulnerabilities are found. Uh, the bad guys will always find some way around, some bypass. So what Tetration also does in real time, it actually tracks compliance with the intent that you just defined. As things happen, we track it in real time. We can also generate alerts that go to your SIM, to go to your orchestration systems, go to your network, whatever you need to do to act on that. It's an open solution that allows us to, again, integrate with our products, but also our 
customers, partners, homegrown solutions. So in summary, it's a solution that's real time, highly scalable. We have customers deploying tens of thousands of workloads policy in real time. Uh, it is consumable in a very simple fashion. We have on-premises option, but actually our growth driver has really been SaaS, because a lot of our customers just want to take that off, uh, want us to take that off their hands as well. And last, but definitely not the least, it's an open solution. Extremely important to be able to connect the dots with everything else, whether it's your infrastructure, whether it's your firewalls, whether it's your orchestration systems, et cetera. So I'm going to bring Pratap back in. Thank you, Yogesh. All right, so thank you, Yogesh. Quick takeaways from this, right? The number one thing is about providing that uniform visibility. We, we heard you, you wanted a single pane of glass to look at your infrastructure, network, all the way up to application. We launched something called the visibility pack, the application visibility pack a few months ago, and it's been quite popular. This is one single, whether it's on-prem or SaaS, it's your way to look at all of your infrastructure and applications so you're ready uh, to go get that call before the next war room happens. So ask your Cisco account rep for the visibility pack. Second one, with all of this, you know, whether it is integration with Tetration or integration with ACI, the most important thing is to serve the business. We are now living in an exciting time of IT where we have the visibility into business even before the business wakes up to look at it. Real-time insights, highly correlated fashion, back to your line of business is the most important thing right now. And, and, and we're all enabled to do that. Let's leverage it. Last one is, as we migrate to cloud, let's go with confidence, because no matter what the infrastructure is, and no matter where the application calls are coming from, you have the ability now to control the cloud migration and tie it back to the business reasons for why, in the first place, you're spreading your applications all across the cloud. So, my ask is, as we spend the next uh, one or two days here, learn a lot more. There's, there are demos everywhere, right ranging from you know, AppDynamics, IoT integrations to Tetration integrations, Cloud Center, Turbonomic, all of that. Let's, let's go spend some time in those deep dives in the sessions. There's a lot of product tutorials for Tetration on YouTube. Please watch them. There's a lot of best practices around security that, that are shared there. Last one, AppDynamics Visibility Pack. It's a single SKU. It's available now, and a lot of customers, and many of you here, have started using it. We are eager to learn from you. We, we started opening up that highly correlated network to application model. We'd love to hear more from you. So use it, send us a lot of feedback. We would love to be back in the next uh, Cisco Live with a lot more innovation. Thank you. Another big thank you to Prathap and Yogesh. <clears throat> now, guys, if you want to see the slides up here, you can always see. All right, the hips just keep rolling. We are on with more show coming at you. I want to let you know, in case you've not figured out or for whatever reason haven't wandered all the way over here, we are in the hub, and there is a lot of stuff happening in the hub. There's a reason why they call the hub. The hub is right at the center of a lot of things that are happening around it, right? Well, the Cisco TV studios are here. We've got lots of bright lights. We're sometimes easy to find. Right next to us is something called the gateway. Now, I had a sneak peek at the, some stuff going on with the Gateway, because this team is innovative, this team is growing fast, and they're doing interesting stuff with customers in such a way that if you are a customer, or if you know of a customer, you're going to want to get them involved in all the different creative ways in which uh, they can be engaged at the Gateway. One of the ways to do that, of course, is to visit them in the Hub. And so let's hop right over the wall, and I believe Nish is ready to uh, give us a little bit more information on the Gateway. Thanks, Rob. Yes, I'm here at the Gateway, and I'm here with Emma Roffey, who is our VP of Marketing for Amir, and Christina, who is the Global Head of Customer Advocacy. Hi, Emma, and hi, Christina. Hello. Hi, Nish. Hi, and how are you doing? Yeah, really good. We're so excited to be here at Cisco Live 2019 at the Gateway Lounge. It's an amazing opportunity for customers to come by and find out what it means to be an advocate for Cisco. Um, Emma, maybe can tell us a bit more about what the program is. Yeah, sure. In short, in a nutshell, it's Cisco's answer to TripAdvisor. So it's a customer, dedicated customer community for customer advocates. And they join the community, they have a lot of fun, they're welcomed here in the Gateway Lounge or as a VIP. And it's a, the platform, it's an online platform, you get it on your mobile phone, and it's built around challenges. And you complete challenges, and you get points, and guess what points make? prizes, uh, which is great. So whether it's baseball caps, t-shirts, but 
most importantly is for our customers to interact with each other, get to know the uh, Cisco community as a whole, outside maybe as uh, just an AM role. Um, yeah, and understand. And I think one advocate said the best way to describe the gateway, it's like having Cisco Live in your back pocket for the next 51 weeks of the year, which is lovely. I love that. So I guess the viewers at home, can they get involved as well? The viewers at home, yeah, well, Christina, that, so Christina, if I introduce properly, Christina is the mother of the gateway. It's her brainchild. And just to let you know, we've gone taking it global and we have in EMEA, so they can join this. We have over 3,000 signed up customers, signed up advocates. But Christina, tell them how to, what to do at home. Yeah, absolutely. So if, if customers are interested in participating and joining the program, you don't have to be at, at Cisco Live. You can also do that online. So you can do that by visiting cisco.com forward slash go forward slash Cisco Gateway and find out how you can participate. We've also got a ton of content online. You can find loads of customer stories sharing how they're using our technology in a really innovative way. So I'm convinced. Um, can you tell customers a little bit more around why they should join? What, what's in it for them? Yeah, absolutely, Nish. Um, I think, you know, one of the things today is that we we really notice as a company that actually customers trust each other more than ever before. The same way that we do in our personal lives, uh, customers want to hear from each other um, and they're, they're actually really interested in personalized content and peer-to-peer -peer insight. There's, no, there's nothing more powerful than that. So if customers are interested in hearing how their peers are adopting technology and improving their business, um, they, you know, they should definitely take part in our program. And some really nice feedback we've had, and if anyone's out there who thinks, well, we don't have an interesting story, or I'm not confident telling the story or standing on stage, if you come and join, you talk to other advocates, we're really helping those um, develop their personal brand. And another one of our advocates, he just said, he said he recently got a promotion, and he said it was down to the gateway and down his involvement because it actually increased his brand awareness in his organization. And suddenly a lot of the IT was more of a, well, dare I say, a hero within the organization. It really helps those with their, their personal brand as well. Great. So I can see, obviously there's a big buzz around us. Um, I can see there's a talk going, going on over there. So yeah. is that a big part of the gateway? Yeah, and this has expanded over the last couple of years. So this is actually where we have customers speaking to customers. So you don't hear from Cisco. You hear from your peers, you hear from other customers, and we have um, speaker tracks, all sessions, panels, and real case studies. And the customers love it, because you, let's face it, you want to hear from others. You want to hear from those who've experienced their technology as opposed to just from Cisco. Um, so yes, we have a little theater for the first time. I think we've learned next year it needs to be a lot bigger, um, and more and more customers can, can come in here and post questions to their peers in the industry. Got it. And is the gateway for everyone to get involved or are there specific roles or what, what kind of people do you end up as a demographic on the gateway? So it can be anyone from uh, an early in career network professional um, through to a CIO or CTO of, of uh, a company. So we have different initiatives. We have um, a VIP initiative within the Gateway program. So the Gateway is much more than just the digital space. It's what we do at physical events. It's how we connect our executives with senior executives within a company. But the great thing that we also do, it's not just about executives. We're also looking to help people that perhaps you know might start out as a network engineer, but really want to grow their personal brand and connect with executives like Emma, for example. Yeah, and I love that. And I think it's really interesting, Emma, I think you mentioned about the storytelling and how people think that they don't have an interesting story to share, but for everyone else, it is really um, interesting. And there's huge value in connecting as well. So thank you so much, both of you. Um, do come and check out The Gateway and back to the studio. Between what is hoped for and what can be, there's a bridge. Between the aspirations of a ball club and the greatest sports venue in America, there's a bridge. Between chaos and wonder, endangered and protected, there's a bridge. Built on technology that can solve, create, heal, inspire, and secure. A bridge. There from the beginning to where we stand today and where we will go from here. One company, one promise. If you can imagine it, we will build the bridge to get you there. Cisco, the bridge to possible. Hello? Hello? You're gonna have to call me back. Did you guys 
book this room? Because I'm pretty sure I booked this room. Anytime there's an opportunity and I see what's possible and what Cisco can do, whether it's helping our customers or it's helping in a time of crisis, that inspires me. And, and I get motivated every day because of the opportunity we have to do all those things. There's a bridge between every barrier and breakthrough, every challenge and every solution, where classrooms have no boundaries. We're actually making a living is also making a difference. And that a thriving business is connected to a thriving community. All right, welcome back to the studio. My name is Rob Boyd. You're watching Cisco TV. We're coming to you, of course, live from Cisco Live here in Barcelona. We're on the final day, but it does not feel like anything has begun to slow down. And we are still right in the middle of the App D conversation. App Dynamics is a big topic, and it continues to be one. Uh, certainly from last year, we were diving deep into there from the acquisition and onto acquisitions that have already been implemented with, uh, I believe it was uh, Cognitive. I may not have that exactly right. Either way, we are providing new visibility into your code, code level visibility that we haven't always had before, but could not be more important than to have right now. And so we're going to continue on with the demonstrations and go out to our remote team and take a look at what Igram has to offer. Igram, why don't you uh, take us through our next bit here, would you? Thank you, Rob. I'm here at World of Solutions at Cisco's Showcase, and I'm at the Data Center App Dynamics booth. I'm here with Prakash Kaligotla, the senior engineer for App Dynamics. Prakash, hi. How are you? Hi, how are you? I'm good, thank you. You're good? 
Sounds great. Well, thank you for being here. We've got a few questions to you. Um, and uh, we were also hoping to see a demo of AppDynamics. So um, I hear that uh, we are actually integrating ACI and AppDynamics because obviously um, ACI gives us that visibility in, and control on the networking side in the data center, while AppDynamics gives us the, gives us the visibility and control for the application performance and application monitoring. So how do we tie in ACI and AppDynamics together? Yeah, uh, first of all, we're happy to announce the release of the integration between both the products. So with this release, we bring both the technologies together so that the information exchange happens between AppDynamics and the networking guys. So it'll help bridge both the worlds, the applications world and the infrastructure world, which were operating in silos much before, and that's not how we want to operate in the digital world. So some of the challenges basically it's, it, it solves is with this, with this information, the application operator, he can troubleshoot all the issues much faster because he understands the underlying semantics of the infrastructure. And it also helps the network operator because he now has visibility into what kind of applications are running on top of his infrastructure. And he also has the health information of each of these applications. So whenever he's doing any policy changes, he can himself determine what kind of impact it has on the applications and do course corrections accordingly. Sounds great. So uh, what would you say is really that you know, I, I think we could reiterate the value for the uh, application administrators and for the network administrators, right, of this integration. Yeah. So to summarize it, for the application administrator, it will really help reduce the time it takes to troubleshoot or isolate network issues which are impacting the application. And for the network operator, it is all about enhanced visibility and monitoring of the applications. So he has visibility into what applications are running on his infrastructure and also the health of that applications running on his infrastructure. So he can make any policy changes or any decisions on the infrastructure with the understanding of how it's going to impact the business and how it's going to impact the health of the business running on his infrastructure. I love that. I love that that you tie it in with the impact on the business because essentially that's what we are talking about here. Um, so, do you mind giving us a demo, a quick demo of AppDynamics integration with ACI? Yeah. Let's go oh. to the demo part. So here I have a sample application. It's an e-commerce bookstore application and AppDynamics automatically lays out all the dependencies of that bookstore application. And for the application operator, if there are any issues which are happening, for example, the inventory tier, that started to go red, which means that there is something wrong happening on the inventory tier. Now you can go over to the network dashboard to figure out whether network is impacting the application. You can see that the network tier over here has also gone red, which means that there is something happening on the networking side, which is actually impacting the application. So with this integration, what you can do is you can select, you can click on this, You can go to one of these connections and you can directly drill into the ACI world looking at the hop-to-hop -hop connectivity between those applications and you can narrow down where exactly that network impact is, is impacting the application. So as you can see here, we have narrowed down, we have zoomed in into ACI. And this is kind of laying out how these two endpoints, which were having issues in the application world, how they are connected through the network and what's happening in the network. You can walk through each of these sessions and you can see if there are any network drops along the path which are impacting the application. You can basically go to the contracts and see if there are any policies which are actually impacting the application and so on. So this is how basically it really helps the application ad, uh, developer or administrator to troubleshoot the issues much faster without involving everybody into the war room situation. Imagine a war room situation where you don't know what the issue is, you're bringing the network guy, you're bringing the DB guy, you're bringing the app guy, and it is taking a whole lot of time. But with this, before involving the right set of folks, you can drill down and narrow down exactly what is happening. Well, that sounds great. I think this is just 
spot on with the challenges our customers are facing. So would you say that um, if a network administrator is looking at the ACI uh, interface, would they then also be able to get, you know, kind of an integration back to AppDynamics if there was an application that's potentially taking a lot of bandwidth or, you know, generating a lot of traffic or there is a threat or something? Could you go back to, uh, from ACI to AppD? Oh yeah, great question. So this is a view which was built inside ACI. So the network operator, he can come into his familiar tool, he can go into this section, and we have built this a new app called App IQ. Inside this App IQ, you can see that there are applications which are getting monitored. These are the applications which are running on the ACI infrastructure, and they are monitored by App Dynamics for their health. As you can see, basically we are bringing in what applications are running and what is the health of each of these applications. Not only that, you can actually drill down into this application and it will basically lay out in, uh, in a dependency graph, a dependency graph between all the ACI constructs with the health of the application around each of these uh, ACI constructs. And if you hover over, basically this also tells you how these endpoints, how these applications are really connected to each of the uh, networking gear. For example, in this particular case, you can see that the order service, it is actually connected to this uh, leaf switch and this interface. So that is telling me that if I make any policy changes either on that endpoint or on that switch, or even make any code changes, code upgrade, I know that I'm going to impact the order services. So now he can compare the health of the order service before he chased, makes a change and after he makes a change and ensures that it stays green. Sounds great. Well, thank you so much for being with us and explaining this. I think this is just amazing for, uh, for our customers. Back to Rob now. All right, thank you so much, guys. Are you not entertained? App Dynamics has so much information, it is hard to get it all in, even when we take our longer bits of show to try and do it. Uh, so a lot of information to take in there. We are going to wrap up that portion of today's show in terms of App D, but don't go away, because we'll be right back with more information around service provider. So we'll see you back in two. If you were to look at the market, the way the technologies are evolving and advancing with the likes of AI and IoT, the demand for performance here and now is more important than it's ever been. We live or die both by the front end and the back end interactions with our customers. We have over 500 million customers worldwide and in the UK 17.9 million of them. They visit our website.